Hi everybody, my name is Morgan Jones and I'm an island educator with the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. Today we are at Calvert Cliffs here in Southern Maryland. These cliffs span approximately 24 miles of Calvert County shoreline. They formed approximately 10 to 20 million years ago when this area was covered by a shallow sea. When this sea receded, it exposed these cliffs and they began to erode. Fossils can be found in these cliffs from species that lived here long, long ago. Such species include crocodiles, sharks, rays, dolphins, whales, and even mastodons. Not only are these cliffs a reflection of the past, but they are a great example of erosion taking place. Hi, my name is Matt Slater, and I work for the Chesapeake Bay Foundation as an island educator out on Smith Island. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about erosion. Erosion is the process of sediment being washed or worn away through natural forces such as wind or water. However, humans can impact this process and speed up and accelerate the amount of sediment that reaches our streams, rivers, and the bay. Agriculture is the largest source of sediment that reaches the bay. However, construction also plays a large role. Any loose, uncovered soil is at risk of being eroded away when it's windy or it rains. So if erosion is a natural process, why do we care about excess sediment in our bay? Too much sediment in our bay can cause extremely negative impacts on our ecosystem. For example, small soil particles can stay suspended in the water and keep sunlight from penetrating habitats like underwater grass beds. If underwater grass beds can't get the sunlight that they need, they will die. These grass beds are a vital habitat and nursery to critters in the Chesapeake Bay. Larger soil particles will settle to the bottom and possibly smother oyster beds. These oyster beds are vital habitat and a strong filtering power for the bay. If they become smothered by excess sediment, they will not be able to receive the oxygen they need out of the water. Lastly, pollutants and toxics can settle and attach to the sediment that flows into the bay, and then these pollutants and toxics will be in our waterways. Nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus can flow into the bay this way and create dead zones. Toxics like gasoline and chemicals can enter the bay and be just like what they sound, toxic to the critters that we love most. So, what can be done to reduce erosion? Farmers can use no-till plowing. No-till plowing consists of not mixing or tilling the soil while planting. This helps keep the soil intact, resisting erosion. Farmers can also utilize rotational grazing and crop rotation, making sure that no plot of land is overused or bare. Construction companies can use silt fences. These are fences that go around the area to keep all the sediment contained. They can also use sediment traps, which are dug out areas where stormwater runoff is diverted so the sediment can settle out. Planting trees can be extremely helpful in reducing erosion. The roots of a tree grow down into the earth and hold the soil together. By planting trees along streams, rivers, and the bay, we can slow erosion and decrease the sediment entering the Chesapeake.